Whatever you're supposed to do will happen if you keep going. Flow with life and let it call you to different movements because I had an education degree, but then my soul said, remember what your mother said, don't follow outside, listen inside. What really turns your light on? Where do you sparkle, Leah? Oh my gosh. I am, I, I just love this person. And I'm so, you are not, like, you cannot not be around this person and not love her. So Leah Valencia Key, I got to meet her at an event that I spoke at recently uh, with, um, on stage. And um, it was at Brooke Hemingway's event. And she just is like, instant love, instant joy, instant sunshine, instant, I, I, you know, for those of you who can't see her right now, she's just like draped in yellow everywhere. I mean, because she's just so complete sunshine and joy. And, but yet she wasn't always that way. She, she grew up in complete poverty, homelessness, I, I, she came from this place that you, you can't even imagine yet. Now she motivates people all over the world. She has a, a business that's in, I think a hundred million homes or something. I, and yet she's good. And she shared the stages with some of the top people in the world. I, I mean, people like uh, Tony Robbins and Ed Milet and, and Brenda Bouchard and Jamie Kern Lima and, and all these amazing people. And how did she get there? How did she go from being in complete poverty and homelessness to being where she is now? We are going to hear all about that right now. She is just so beautiful inside and out. And it is such my honor and my pleasure and my joy to be here with Leah Valencia Keith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I am honored. It's surreal just to hear you um, replay uh, what blessings that uh, comes in my life. And I'm excited to share how, you know, because we were talking about that. Like we all we all can receive these blessings and we all can share our glass ceilings and it doesn't yes. matter where you come from. Yes, it's true. And I have to say, I'm wearing your, your bracelet today. Your worthy bracelet. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm displaying your jewelry. I'm doing the Vanna today. <laughs> <laughs> and I have your, your box. It comes in a beautiful box. I have to like share. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna just be you know um right out there um shamelessly you know sh showing your beautiful jewelry every minute we can today because it is so gorgeous and amazing so but let's talk about where you came from where you yeah. came from because you did not start out sharing stages doing this beautiful thing selling jewelry on qvc where did you start? I love that. Thank you, Rebecca. Because like you said, if you see me, you would say, oh, she was born into greatness or born into joy. And so it's it's okay. It's It was given to her. And quite the opposite is true. I was born into what I um, self-define as darkness, born in the most impoverished neighborhood of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to a single mother. Uh, my mother had three children. I'm the youngest. My mother is one of the most, was one because she's no longer with me, um, but one, one of the most intelligent women I know. But I self-diagnosed that she was paralyzed by um, society stereotypes and generational curses. Generational curses are what's passed down to you from family history. So my grandmother was poverty. Her mother was poverty. And it just kept being passed down um, from generation to generation. But the beauty um, is that my mother would use her voice. And so there was a moment we went from poverty, meaning living in a neighborhood filled with trash right on the streets, drug transactions on every corner, to destitute 
when my mother broke her leg and she broke it and so bad it was in several places so she couldn't do the little scrap up work that she was doing to afford this one basement apartment and what I remember so clearly that I always share is um, there's this day my mother's getting her children home myself my brother and I um, to sc- from school and we get to the door and there's a padlock on the door mm. mm if you can think about that, this is a mother with three children. Mm-mm-mm. She can no longer get into the place they call home. All of our belongings are locked in and no longer do we have belongings, but we have no place to, to rest her three babies heads. No. And, and we yeah. were young, so we're stair step. We're about my sister. I guess she was about um, 12. My brother's about 10 and I'm about eight, eight years old. So that (laughs) young, um, these babies and that immediately sent us to a women's homeless shelter. And I always paint the picture of the first day. I try to black out tragedy in my life, my coping mechanism. But I remember the first day we landed in the woman's homeless shelter, because if you can imagine a gym size room and cots, metal cots. And if anyone doesn't know, it's a bed that's metal and they unfold and they're very hard and uncomfortable and they're small. And these are cots filling the gym room one foot apart. So basically almost right on top of each other. Oh my gosh. And one family gets one cot. Oh my gosh. How do you even fit on that? The entire. So we are balled up squeezing, trying to sit and manage to even fall asleep on each other in this gym size room where there's moaning and hopelessness and sorrow filling this homeless shelter. And oh my gosh. Picture is because in the midst of that darkness, my mother looked down at her three children and said, Your predicament does not determine your destiny. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh I just got the chills. I literally just got the chills. Every time I say it, um, I get emotional and it's impactful for anyone who's listening because it doesn't matter your predicament. It doesn't, you don't have to be in such a destitute place. When I think about it now at age 44, I think about it like you could be in a beautiful predicament where society thinks it's, oh my God, people would love to be in your predicament. But if your inner soul says that there's another destiny for you Mm -hmm. that whatever you are your destiny is there yeah and I call that what my mother did she planted a seed for me I was young I was eight I didn't I heard it because I'm able to share it now so it's Mm -hmm. wrong and I love stopping and saying like how powerful is that for a a woman who was kind of bound by these circumstances to decide to use the very last thing that she could and to speak life into her children's life. Wow. It's like the Holy Spirit was speaking through her. The Holy Spirit fully. And so I love to stop for us and say, what are we speaking in our lives? Like, what are we choosing to speak into your loved one's life, into your life? Because that is a seed that will grow I'm a living testimony, no matter what it is, good or bad. So I'd encourage you to take inventory and audits of the words you speak out of your mouth and think into your brain because you're planting seeds. And I'd ask you if they are challenged and maybe not positive words, change them into positive directing your life into the path you want it to be words because it will grow. Now, it's a seed, like I said, because I didn't really get it. Honestly, when I was little and I heard it, I was like, "Mm, this is looking kind of destiny to me, (laughs) right? Like, this is pretty bad. So I start to become my environment. And I start to be negative, failing every grade in school. Just what I saw, I was becoming. And I share this moment so clearly because I remember it. Years have went past. I'm about, about, I guess, 11, 10 or 11 now. And I'm failing, just becoming downward spiral. And I'm coming home from school and I see my mother standing at the homeless shelter door. And I'm like, "Uh oh, this doesn't look good. So by the time I get in front of her, she says, Leah, I have a question. Do you want to be a follower or a leader? Mm. 
and I'm confused, Rebecca. I'm like, what, what? And she's like, because right now you're following and guess what, Leah? You're going to become everything that you see. Or Leah, you have the power to choose. You have a divine inner whisper, a divine light and a destiny that all you have to do is lead your life to your destiny and light. And so Leah, you choose mm -hmm. alone with the power of choice. And I must be honest, um, so when you see me today and you see this light and this joy, that was the first key that I would say truly unlocked my light and this energetic being of choosing to lead myself in a way that was is my calling to be in the world, no matter what's going on around me, because I understood that I was gifted that I could choose to do it. Right. I could choose to follow or I could choose to be something even if I don't see it. And I chose that this light, this joyful way of being, this love centered way, this dreamer that could see beyond what was in front of me is what I could choose. And I just start choosing it. And I remember the first day um, going back to school after this, I asked my teacher, how do I get better grades? How do I see outside of my environment? So I love sharing and stopping there for anyone. One of my keys of helping unlock this energetic, positive, joyful, light way of living is asking up. I believe in God. Ask your creator, God, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is what I hear you say over my life, even at a young age. This will unlock to me. And this is what I need. And then sharing out. So I share all of my dreams with everyone. I share it. I let people know. I'm not expecting. But the key here is you don't expect from a human being anything. You just allow them to receive your heart. And then you allow God to align your proper earth angel that is meant on your journey to be a blessing, maybe for a short time or for a long time in your life. Mm -hmm. It's just served me in such a beautiful way just to believe God enough to walk in ways that don't seem to be true in front of me and just speak what the future is when it's not currently there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I've heard the, the the saying that people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Yes. Right. And so sometimes people, and you, you know, you refer to it as earth angels, but you know, I think that earth angels are reason, season, or lifetime. Exactly. And they are, people are in your life. Some people, when you share, first of all, this concept of just sharing what's in your heart, what I think happens, and I can speak for myself and maybe someone experiences this, when when you allow these things, these dreams, these um, callings to just circle inside of you, it actually can become torturous because it's just, and it has nowhere to go. You don't know how to make it happen. It, it's weighing on your heart. But when you share it out to people, just releasing it out of your mouth is releasing and I call it giving it wings to fly because now you're sharing it out in the world. And um, Bob Goff, I was blessed to be in one of his workshops with loving, amazing Jamie Kern Lima, my earth angel worthy book. You need it. Um, her new, new seller. Yes. Um, I know she's one of your besties. My bestie, my <laughs> sister. Um, and I was with her and Bob Goff said in this workshop, he said, the net, the human, the human is wired to help. It's just our natural way of being now, but it doesn't mean I'm wired to directly help you when you say your need. But what happens is when you share out your visions, it goes into people's memory bank. And now unconsciously, they are spidey sensing to support you. So whenever something comes up that can be of support to you, automatically, like you, Rebecca, when we met each other, remember, I was asking for prayer for this QVC launch 
that's um happening on um April 13th. But when when you heard it, it wasn't even looking like it could be possible because things were happening. And I just spoke out into the whole audience. Could you claim this for me and with me? Immediately you, Rebecca, came up to me when we saw each other on the side and you said, I want to support you. How can I support you? Let me be a part of your support because that's what the human heart does. Everyone is not in alignment to be in that support of you, but when they are, just like you, Rebecca, they will come running because that's where we get our joy in lifting people up. Well, I think most people do. Yes. 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 Most. Now you're not. Now everybody's not going to be that way. But that's why you know another statement. The right is- people. The right people appear. The right people appear in your life. And I do believe that, that when you speak that, when you, when you speak your hopes, your needs, your whatever it is, the net appears. It appears. But when you hold it back, no one even knows. No, you are going to get naysayers. You're going to get people who actually try to kill the dream. But what I know to be true is you are the keeper of your dreams and your goals and your success. You are the curator, you are the end and beginning of it. There is no one, so no one can speak negativity that will shatter a dream unless you allow it to. So when you get in contact with people that aren't in alignment or don't believe, I love to reframe it as fuel to say, okay, you don't believe I have to actually remove myself from that energy. Because I never stay in bad energy space. Mm -hmm. I remove myself from that energy. And then I say, okay, now this is even more fuel for me to know that this almost impossible thing that someone believes is impossible is going to be possible. And let's watch, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yes. I mean, I I remember reading something. It was in um, a, a book from Marianne Williamson, which I just absolutely love her. And she actually said, whenever somebody is jealous of you or saying something about you, just turn around and, and say to yourself, smile a little bit and say, I haven't even started yet. It's so funny. I was in a meeting yesterday, another big dream to like help the community that I grew up in a very rough um, neighborhood of Philadelphia. And I was in this meeting and there were three people that were like feeling my dream and like jumping out their seats. You could feel their heart. And it was one, one with the most hardest face and like, well, what's the hardship? What's the, no, that's not the hardship. And it was like the cut down, the cut down. And what I loved about it was I, t- I even said, I was like, here's the beauty of life. We are able to make the impossible possible. Mm-hmm. You find magical people that believe in you. They will conspire together with you to figure out the impossible. And that's how you have to train your life when you come in contact with the opposition of what you know your destiny is to be. Yes, absolutely. And so I think that when you put it out there, when you put your vulnerable stuff out there and your needs and your dreams and your wants and your desires, those earth angels do show up to support you. That they, 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 it it just magically appears. And can I add to that? But don't have expectations of your earth angels. Let them, let them pour out as much or as little as they are called to do. Mm-hmm. Where the energy, the way I stay in a good energy vibe, it's like, well, how does this happen, Leah? How do you go from homeless to being in the presence of so many amazing, beautiful people on QVC and all these opportunities? It's my heart center energy that I protect at all costs and that I'm checking in with at all costs to radiate out the intention of love and joy that I claimed myself to be even in the midst of something that says I shouldn't be. So I define for me that I'm going to be joy and I'm going to be love. 
And then I say, okay, what does that look like? We we say those words a lot. You hear them, joy and love. They they could actually be misused if you really want to know because they almost use so much they have no impact. But if you stop a little and say like, what are they? And you put actions. This is how I train my brain. I put an action to this word. Okay, if I'm going to be loved no matter what, even in the face of someone that's not showing me love, what does that look like? Well, love first protects. So that means I got to protect myself. But love protects yourself without harming others. So I protect myself in a way that's still kind to the opposition. Love is unwavering. Love is kind. Love is non-judgmental. So these are actions of how I decide to show up. And then what is joy? Joy is a foundation that can't be shattered because you know, even if it's not good, it will be good. Right. And so I ground into these mindsets of being and I decide to be that all the time, even when it feels ugly. And then what happens is it gravitates people to you because not many times do you experience that. So you're like, what is this? I, I want to come a little closer to it. And then these people show up in your lives and the positive way of staying in good energy is not having expectations of others, allowing them to love you how they are called to love you, allowing them to be joying in your life how they are called to be joying your life. And then it keeps this flow of good energy because you don't expect someone to do something outside of their realm, if mm. that makes sense. Oh, that's so beautiful because then you're not in this victimhood. Yes. Yes. If they, if they, if you think, um, oh, this person had the ability to do all of this and they didn't, they weren't called to do it for you, but maybe they were called to have a kind conversation mm. and that's good enough. And that kind conversation should fuel your energy space to move to the next vision and journey in life. Yes, because you're not over there going, why didn't they do this for me? And how come yes. I didn't? They yes. should have, because when you go in that space, your energy becomes negative. Yeah. You shut down on love. You shut down on your possibility that goodness will come because you're living in the, the way of thinking that's heavy and weighted. If you shift and you say, I accept the goodness you gave me. Yes. Because and that is it. how you yeah. attract more and more goodness into your life yeah. because you're in gratitude. That's it. You're in gratitude. And people feel that they feel that you love them how they are for who they are, why they are. They feel that they feel that you're not scanning them for what can come from them, but you're scanning them for everything that they already are and you accept it and you love it. Yes. Beautiful uh, place to be. Beautiful place to be. And so that is when I, I, I want to just go back because yes. people are going, so then how did she go from being homeless to yeah. being on QVC? And, 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 you know, what was that leap? How did yes. that happen? The leap is being um, open and flexible to the inner calling on your life as much as not having expectations on others. So what I do is I have big dreams. Some people call them goals, however you want to title them. I have big vision. So when I was younger, the big vision was to see beyond my environment. That was the big vision. And then I realized, oh, when I, um, I asked and I shared, I want to see beyond this. I want to see. And so teachers and educators start allowing me to go to different after school activities that start to show me places. I believe that exposure is the great equalizer. I believe that when you can show someone different, allow someone to hear something that they've never heard before, see something that they've never seen before, dreams start to come about in their heart. And then when you can dream something, that means you have a vision of something that's not in front of you. Then you start to get a guiding roadmap of actually how to get there. So my dream was, oh, I got to see beyond this. And, and what was it? How And the teachers would say, education is your key. Okay, well, let's do education. So I start to really focus on learning. And I realized like, oh, college 
was my way to get out of the poverty neighborhood that I was in. I don't think college is the way. That's my honest thing. But I think college is a way for me because I had to get around other things that I could see. So I set my target on college. I was the first and only person in my family and in that neighborhood to go to college. I got my undergrad in um, business. I got my master's in education. My mother told me to never, never quit something in the end and complete it all the way. So I felt like, okay, I'm going to go far. I'm going to get my master's. All the while, my mother was getting sick. Mm. And she was definitely um, ill and bedridden. So I would go back and forth from college to see her. And one of one of the very last conversations that we had together, that, that bracelet looks so pretty when I saw you lift it up. <laughs> That Valencia key bracelet, worthy. Um, <laughs> and, saw, and I, this is it's worthy, and it's so pretty, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, oh, it's, it's a reminder of worthy, and this ties into my experience. The, one of the last conversations my mother and I had um, was beautiful. She before she left this earth, she said, "Leah." I see you choosing. I see you leading your life. I see you shining to your destiny. She said, now life is very hard sometimes. And sometimes it's going to get so heavy that you may forget that you have the light inside of you. And she handed me these little earrings. And she said, here's some earrings. I want you to wear your earrings every day. Maybe it's when you're putting them on. Maybe it's when you touch them or you catch a glimpse in the mirror. But let them be a symbolic reminder that you have the light inside of you, all you have to do is choose to consistently unlock it. Yeah. And I get emotional about that because we all have the light inside of us. Yes. It's, I'm not special. We are uniquely special, right? Because we're uniquely created. But this story is not just a story that I can happen. It can happen to all of us because we have it whatever the light is for you, it's in you. Yes. And all we have to do is listen to that and keep unlocking it no matter what. And so mm. that shortly my mother passed after that beautiful conversation. Mm. That led me just therapeutic to draw jewelry, wearable symbolic pieces. Cause she exposed me when I see you wear that worthy bracelet. It's mm -hmm. like, it's, it's a reminder that maybe you're using your hands and you're talking and maybe a little something comes in your brain that makes you feel unworthy or less than, and then you catch a glimpse of maybe just the W on the word. And it reminds you like, oh no, you're worthy. Put your shoulders back. Mm -hmm. And uh, try one more time. Ed Milet has that book, beautiful book, um, One More, The Power of One mm -hmm. More. Oh yeah, I think that's right back here too. Yes, take one yeah. more. It's these, wearable reminders that are so powerful when the world tries to shatter it out. And so I should start sketching this as therapy and I'm going through my life. I have a master's in education. And one key I'd love to share is like, have, have a dream, but be loose and allow life as much as you don't lay expectations on humans, release the heavy weights of expectations on yourself. Meaning like sometimes you're like, I should have been here at age 30. I should have accomplished this at 40. Whatever you're supposed to do will happen if you keep going. Flow with life and let it call you to different movements. Because I had an education degree, but then my soul said, remember what your mother said, don't follow outside, listen inside. What really turns your light on? Where do you sparkle, Leah? And creativity is where I sparkled. So with a master's degree, I went back to cosmetology school. Total opposite. Like I should, I could have had a salary. I was actually working in a position that was going to give me a salary. And I was like, but I don't, my light's not bright there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll die to self in that. I will be a walking dead. Truth. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. You can be living and not living. Right. Oh, yeah, I get it. Emotion. Yeah. Right? Trying to please what the world said. 
but fully living. And this is another key on how you allow your energy. We talk about this energy and this light to be so positive that it affects and affects the accomplishments and the dreams that you have. And when you fully live, you find you and you walk in it, mm -hmm. even when it's scary. Right. So I go back, I got a, I get a cosmetology and license, I get an instructor's license, and now I'm sweeping salon floors <laughs> with a master's degree. Humbling. But why are you sweeping floors? Because I want to learn this art craft. I decided that art was my joy. Cosmetology is creativity, but it will pay you, <laughs> right? Because yeah. everyone hair and makeup. I didn't want to be poor in poverty again right. for art. And this led me to um, deciding I was working in this um, makeup store to survive, Matt Cosmetics to be exact. And a lady told me about QVC. Oh, and yeah. I was ringing her up and I always ask questions. Oh my gosh, to fuel energy, ask questions. People love sharing knowledge and knowledge drives you to different places. And she was like, oh, QVC is this place 45 minutes from here. It's 24 hour network. And I said, oh, is there a salon in there? She was like, yeah, 24 hour salon. And I was like, I want to work there. This was my next dream. I set out to work for QVC only because I wanted to create 24 hours. On my personal time, I'm hand sketching jewelry therapeutically for me. And this is how life is very interesting. It seems unaligned, but can be aligned, if that makes sense. Right. Where I'm sketching jewelry, I'm going to cosmetology, but life is starting to plan my life for me if I just follow my light. And so it takes me five years to get into QVC, P.S. I get a license, I get no for five years, but I'm sweeping floors and I'm learning all different hair textures. I speak my dreams that I want to be on work for QVC out for five years. Anyone that smiled at me twice, I would tell them my dream. That was the barometer if they were kind. This one gentleman, I'm bartending a, a third job to su survive. And it's just him and I. And he smiles twice. And I'm like, I want to work for QVC. <laughs> oh, okay. Awkward. But interesting because I work for Comcast. And my dear friend, Stephanie Humphrey, works for QVC. He said, your light is so beautiful. Let me see what she can do for you. I say that to say... When you are moving through life, how are you? Are you kind? Are you joyful? Even in the midst of the struggle, I'm sweeping floors, I'm bartending, and QVC is telling me no every time I apply. That's darkness, right? But in the midst of that, I'm still joy because I know things are going to happen. I'm kindness. I'm speaking it out. I'm seeing it as if it's so, and I'm learning all the way. I'm crying sometimes, a lot of times, but I'm living out this way of being that I said that I was, joy and love. The next day, Stephanie Humphrey texts, um, messages me. She's never met me a day in her life. She says, my friend Fred said, you are such kind love that do whatever you can to help you she gives mm. me the qvc contact number of the manager their email and she says i've never met you but something tells me to say use me as a reference mm. oh my gosh your energy your way of being in the world matters more than anything i believe how do yeah. i go from homelessness it's the way I choose to be. Right. I did that interview. I've been sweeping floors and learning for five years. Your nose are your journey to learn. I've learned what I needed to learn. I get the interview. I nail the audition. Now I'm walking into this QVC doors that is like the second light that turns on in my life. I'm styling hosts that are making entrepreneurs dreams come true because they are sharing out these businesses to over a hundred million homes. And then I'm styling business creators who have a dream. And I meet my dear sister, Jamie Kern Lima in QVC. I meet Vicky Sai from Tatcha Skincare, um, Vicky creator and founder of It Cosmetics now, two times New York Times bestseller worthy book. And these beautiful people 
hearts see my heart and they say, come along with me. And they take a hair and makeup artist to travel around the world with them as they build their business. And they introduce me into rooms that I've never seen before. And they allow me to sit and listen and hear. And I start to get exposed to what was possible. And what they showed me was when you have a intangible truth, like um, the, um, Jamie's message was, you can create this confidence. You can unlock everything that you're supposed to be. T um, Vicky's mission was skin care is soul care. Yeah. And I realized that. And then they poured it into something tangible. And when the receiver gets it, it becomes life changing. And every time I would style someone, the last thing they would do, they would say, what bracelet do I put on? What necklace do I seal in? What earrings do I lock in before I go into this big opportunity on air or press meeting? And I realized, wow, that these symbols that you can wear really can be this armor of courage mm -hmm. and light when no one else can go with you. And my mother had shared that sim symbolism is power. And I had this sketchbook and I realized I was like, I asked both of my mentor, I was like, should I do it? And they were like, do it. They were like, I don't know jewelry, but you could do it. So I jumped out and decided to create um, Valencia Key. I never wanted to use my name, but on a journey to Egypt, Morocco and Spain, random, um, I was told that the key symbolizes mm -hmm. unlocking light in your life. And in Spain, in this um, local dialect, Valencia is bravery and courage. Yeah. And I realized the whole symbols are that we have the keys of unlocking our bravery and our courage inside of us. And yeah. when you symbol all you have to do is be reminded to just live out to your fullest potential and that's how Valencia Key was born ah bravery and courage and unlocking your bravery and courage that is such a beautiful message all of you need this jewelry and you need to be wearing this because that is what all of us need we all need to be wearing this to be symbolizing unlocking our bravery and courage all of us okay. and so tell us how we can get this tell us how we can be doing this oh thank you thank you i'm so excited i, I have a beautiful opportunity so it's been about four my jewelry is online qvc but actual and on air airing meaning you see me on air speaking to my jewelry it's been actually four years and I've paired and collaborated with one of the most amazing QVC hosts, host Kirsten Linquist on QVC. She has a heart of love, just like us. Um, she believes in possibility. And we created this collection, the Sand Dollar Collection. This is the mm -hmm. box. It's so cute. It's so made of cute. sand dollars. And sand dollars represent that we're fragile, yet yeah. resilient, right? Like you can go through storms. It's and also weather. the Holy Spirit, by the way. It's the Holy Right? They're the yes. side of a sand dollar. That's yes, symbolic. it is the Holy Spirit. I literally just get the chills again. I just like literally want to cry. Kirsten is a, a beautiful believer of God. And so both of us wanted to bring a collection that when you wear it, you feel the Holy Spirit. Yes. Feel the peace, the joy, the everything that God is, the grace and the gratitude. Mm -hmm. and, so there's a necklace, a ring, and a bracelet that that we're launching April 12th. You can go online at qvc.com and order the Kirsten Linquist and Valencia Key Sand Dollar Collection. And then on the 13th of April, I'll be going live with Kirsten, sharing this beautiful collection um, to so many hearts. And I'd love for you to just receive a piece of the Sand Dollar Collection, just to remind that God will give you the grace and all you need to do is stay in gratitude and all of what is meant for you to be, as long as you keep looking for it, will show up. Yeah, so go check her out on QVC on her on her launch. And and then even beyond that. So beyond that, after the launch, where can they check you yes, out? And beyond that, uh, ValenciaKey.com is where you'll find all the beautiful collections, the worthy bracelet that Rebecca, you're lovingly wearing. 
Um, there's worthy. It's just so many pieces. What I love is I just want you to feel the light and the energy that I speak about. So if anything it does for you, it allows you when you put it on to say, set your energy and intention to love. Set your yes. energy. And to love yourself and to show yourself. up in bravery. Yes. And then the world will feel it and things will start to reveal to you where your next steps in your journey are. So ValenciaKey.com is um, a place, put your email in. I love, I have this um, training that I love sharing with people about very much um, from Jamie's book. I was so honored that with Jamie's worthy book, she was like, Leah, let's collab and make that worthy bracelet. And she gifted it to all of her loving. Yes, I got, I got the whole kit. Well, you got the whole kit, right? She sent me the whole thing. So beautiful because yeah. when you read the worthy book, you want to take those nuggets that you remember and kind of store it to connect it to something. And that's what our dream is that you connect it to that bracelet. So whatever you learned in the worthy book is your reminder. And so those pieces are on there. And I just love love. So just connect with my heart. And like you, Rebecca, I'm so grateful for your love. Yeah. So uh I I'm just so grateful for you and all of you. This is the message really here is that it's a choice every day to be in your highest vibrational state and to choose joy and to choose love and to choose to show up. You know, I I actually have I I I have the intellectual property on the phrase the deciding factor. Um, yeah, because to me, the deciding factor in your day, in your joy, in your life, in, 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 in all of it is like to choose in every moment. Yes. Decide. I love the deciding factor because when you make a decision, it's final, right? Like I've decided to do this. I've decided to be this way. I've decided to radiate and vibrate at the, my most kindest, most aware, most loving intention in the world. And so when you decide it, the next thing is you just do it. And yeah, that's the message that I love to keep aligning in the world. And it is hard. I know when we speak the words, it sounds easy. So I, someone's listening like, yeah, that sounds easy, but it's hard. I agree. It's hard, but the truth is life is hard. And the truth is we're going to get something in life. (laughs) We're going to get hard no matter what. The beauty is how about you curate the hard that you receive? Like, are you getting, the world is going to give you some hard things you never asked for. And in that, how do you choose to respond to it? That's the deciding factor of where your life path starts to break off. Yes. Yeah. I think that that, that's going to be my next book, The Deciding Factor. Oh, please, please bring it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are the best. Thank you.